we can't talk about economics without beginning with this graph because it's the most important graph in microeconomics. It's simply the trade-off between price and quantity and the S and the D refer to supply and demand. When you think about demand for consumers, when the price is high, the quantity is low. When the price gets lower, the quantity demanded, the quantity purchased will become higher. Now, in the case of supply, if the price is low, there's going to be very few people willing to supply it. When the price goes high, more people are willing to supply it. And where those two lines intersect, that's known as the equilibrium price. That's the amount of price and quantity that will be uh, the quantity sold at that particular price. Now, we've got more to talk about than, than just the laws of supply and demand because ultimately economics is all about scarcity. On one hand, we have limited resources, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. We have only one planet. On the other side, we have virtually unlimited human wants. We want more food, more clothing, more shelter, more jewelry, more travel, more recreation, and so on. One of the most famous books written about economics was Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations, written in 1776. There's a number of noteworthy things to talk about in there, but I'm just going to highlight a couple of them. It is not from the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer, or the baker that we expect our dinner, but from their regard for their, to their own interest. So think about that. If you ate breakfast this morning, perhaps bacon, eggs, and, and hash browns, how did that happen? Did the potato farmer really care about you? Did the uh, man or woman who raised chickens and, and uh, got their eggs every morning, did they care about you? Or the, the uh, hog farmer who uh, had a whole bunch of pigs that he slaughtered and turned into bacon, they didn't care about you. They cared about their own self-interest. And that's what got them up every morning to plant the potatoes and, and uh, harvest the eggs and so on. So we need to talk a little bit about socialism versus capitalism so that you understand the difference. Socialism is a planned economy, largely. Capitalism is a market-oriented economy. In socialism, we, we have a lot more collectivism, people doing things as a society rather than as an individual. And socialism involves cooperation and competition. One of the problems uh, versus competition of capitalism one of the problems with cooperation is we don't all agree on what we should be cooperating on and therein lies the rub because oftentimes socialism begins nicely but ends with cooperation at the point of a gun so that's the problem eventually with socialism now even Bono the lead singer of U2 said aid is just a stopgap commerce, entrepreneurial capitalism takes more people out of poverty than aid. And Ralph Waldo Emerson said, doing well is the result of doing good. That's what capitalism is all about. It's not greed and profit and, and exploiting others. It's doing good, doing well for others. Walter Williams is a famous economist. He said, prior to capitalism, the way people amassed great wealth was by looting, plundering, and enslaving their fellow man. Capitalism made it possible to become wealthy by serving your fellow man. Make a product that people want, and you'll become wealthy. There are, of course, opposing points of view. Hugo Chavez is the former leader of Venezuela. He died of cancer in 2013. Every day I become more convinced that it's necessary to transcend capitalism. But capitalism cannot be transcended through capitalism itself. It must be done through socialism, true socialism, with equality and justice. Socialism is big on equality. Here's Ron Swanson, a, a fictional character in Parks and Recreation. Capitalism is God's way of determining who is smart and who is poor. Just a little joke there. Anyway, here's the real truth. Socialism is where people wait for bread, but capitalism is where bread waits for people. That's a pretty profound statement and photograph, but that's what happens oftentimes because in a planned economy, 
you don't necessarily know how much bread to plan for. In capitalism, you just build it and they will come. Winston Churchill, former Prime Minister of, of Great Britain, Socialism is a philosophy of failure, the creed of ignorance, and the gospel of envy. Its inherent virtue is the equal sharing of misery, because socialism is all about equality. Now, Margaret Thatcher, another former British Prime Minister, said the problem with socialism is that you eventually run out of other people's money. And I'm just throwing in here a little bit about Che Guevara because co uh, college students seem to love him. Though they often don't realize that Che was a murderous, racist, pro-war communist who imprisoned homosexuals, tried to ban alcohol, gambling, and rock music, and actually had plans to nuke New York City. Regardless of that, here's Karl Marx, really the founder of communism. He wrote with uh, Frederick Engels the Communist Manifesto. From each according to his abilities, to each according to his needs is one of the famous sayings, but even he summed up communism in one sentence, the abolition of private property. There's a whole list of things he's, he hoped for, not only the abolition of private property, but a heavy progressive graduated income tax, the abolition of rights and inheritance, confiscation of property of anybody who wanted to leave the country or who rebelled. Uh, centralization of credit in the hands of the state. Uh, he had a whole list of things here. Equal liability of all to work, establishment of industrial armies, especially for agriculture. It was, of course, written in the 1840s, so he was still picturing a pre-industrial world. Um, 